Okay, we have made it to our final session of our first week and we saved the best for last. So we are excited that you're here with us. Um, most of you, it looks like, have been on, but I think I see a couple new names. So we're going to go through the details and then we're going to let Johnny and Lori get started. So I'll start. I'm Melody Offiel, and uh, welcome to this last session. It's going to be a treat. We're excited uh, to see what they these ladies have for you today. And I'll be monitoring the chat. And so if you have questions about Ag in the Classroom, I'll answer those there, and I'll try to engage you in some conversation along the way. Enjoy the session. It's going to be wonderful. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the last session of the day. Um, again, my name is Emily and I will be kind of manning the Q&A box. So if you have any questions for our presenters, um, then just put your question in the Q&A and we will let them know what those questions are so we can get those answered. Thank you. Okay, and before we get started, uh, Lori, this is a question for you. Is Harrison Newmark your computer and do yes, I need to... We were just watching that to make sure we could see what the uh, okay. proceed. Okay, just making sure I didn't need to send you to panelists. All right, well, I'm Audrey Harmon, and we appreciate you joining us again this afternoon. Um, this is Dirty Little Secrets. I wish I would have remembered to say the title last time because I love the title. I think that's fun. Uh, with Johnny Keel and Lori Newmark. And so um, Johnny is third through fifth grade math and gifted teacher at Truman Elementary in Norman. She is a past Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year and also a National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture Award winner. And this is her daughter, Lori Newmark. Lori is a fantastic presenter. She's a K through sixth grade STEAM teacher at Moore. And we are so glad to have them presenting this afternoon. And I'm gonna turn it over to them because they have lots of great information to share. Okay, let me get over here to I'll share screen, right? All right, can you see my PowerPoint? Okay, there you go. I'm gonna get it over here to the slideshow so it'll be a little bigger. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about Dirty Little Soil. These are our, our email addresses in case you have questions or we also, one of the things about doing this is that we get so many great ideas from you as well. So please feel free to share those ideas if anything that you get from the workshop today or maybe something that you think of. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about the dirty little secrets. If you were to ask your students, what do we, I need to, for a plant to grow? Chances are they're going to say water, they're going to say sun, and some will say soil or dirt, but there's a difference. And a lot of students do not understand that. And a lot of people just use both terms interchangeably, but they really are different. Soil is alive. Soil is like a busy, vibrant city. And dirt is like a ghost town. It's, it's dead. There's nothing there anymore. It's abandoned. So um, that, is, that is your big difference there. Soil is an ecosystem. It has all kinds of living organisms in there, worms, um, organic matter, uh, bacteria, where again, dirt is just particles. Dirt is what you get under your fingernails. Soil is what you want to uh, plant your uh, plants in because it has nutrients and things there. In fact, one teaspoon of soil has so many uh, bacteria and um, organisms in it. It has enough organisms in there to that it's actually more than the population of the world. So that is quite a bit. And the little guy down here jumping up and down is a new um, 
kind of an image to show you that to get down and dirty is a good thing. When you get soil and get your hands in the soil and the soil gets on your hands, soil actually uh, makes your body secrete serotonin, which is a chemical, natural chemical that the brain secretes and it helps with depression. Um, it makes you happier and uh, it actually uh, can help with cognitive functions as well. Um, it also strengthens your immune system. So planting a plant right now during all this COVID-19 would be a good thing. And the little worm down there, it takes 500 years to make one inch of soil. So that's an awfully long time. And so because it does take such a long time to replenish, it is considered a non-renewable resource. And Earth is the only planet that has soil on it. So we're pretty special. Okay, this is a lesson that is in the Ag in the Classroom site and it is called Save Our Soil. It has a lot of activities in there, but this chart is one that's real meaningful. And I remember the first time I saw this simulation, I was just like in awe. And my kids always are, even if they've seen it and I show it to them, I start teaching them about Ag in the Classroom in third grade and then I build on that through as fifth graders. And they may see this simulation more than once, but they're still always just totally amazed at it. So I'm gonna share this little video with you. And hold on just one second, I'm gonna call it up. Get that, hit stop share. And Lori, share screen. Yeah. Oh, over here. I'm sorry, I'm coming, I'm coming. There we go. No, Can, it's not there. It's not there, all right, hold on just one second. We're gonna try it again. Share screen. Share screen here. Oh, that wasn't it. Sorry, guys. Hold on just one second. We're coming. Right here. <laughs> You're all right. Don't forget whenever you share your screen to share the audio too. Okay. think it didn't come up okay we're going to try this one more time stop share I'm going to go down here to share screen there we go now let's see if we can if we've got sound Imagine the earth as an apple. If it were sliced into four pieces, three pieces would represent the earth's bodies of water. One piece would represent land. If the remaining piece were sliced in half again, one piece would represent the land on earth that is unsuitable or inhospitable for farming. This leaves one eighth of the apple representing land that is used to live on and grow food. Three quarters of the remaining apple slice would represent soils too poor to produce food, or land covered by cities, roads, and buildings. The remaining piece, one thirty-second of the apple, represents the portion of the earth where food can grow. This is our farmland. The thin peel of this slice represents the farmland's layer of topsoil where our food is grown. Every minute of every day, the United States loses about an acre of farmland. Over 70% of America's fruit, vegetables, and dairy products are produced on farms near cities that lie directly in the path of sprawling development. Sustainable practices and careful planning, such as farmland conservation, are needed to protect this precious resource for today and for the future. All right. Okay, so then that's a very good chart that you can use this chart to fill out. Um, there is a actual video that's in this lesson. I just kind of like this video. I like the graphics on it a little bit more. But again, you could tie this in with fractions and with math, having them actually maybe 
uh, do a paper apple and dissect it and to show the different parts about it. Oops. Okay, a dichotomous key is where you're going to use clues and kind of help you to narrow down to identify something specifically. So because our kids a lot of times are thinking that anything to do with agriculture is just working on the farm, milking the cow, you know, uh, wearing the overalls, they've got that stereotypical kind of an idea in their head and we need to let them know that agriculture just goes across so many avenues and offers so many opportunities. So I like to start talking to my students about careers early and a lot of times they're like, well, that's not something I'm interested in. So this dichotomous key about soil science, I modified it from one of the resources, I believe Nutrients uh, for Life. And so it says, which of these would you most enjoy? Making new friends, playing on the computer, walking outdoors, teach someone a new skill. Then from there, they keep narrowing it down until it gets to the different science, um, soil science careers. And there's even a lesson that kind of goes to it. I found that last minute, so I added it on my PowerPoint, but you won't have it in the handouts, but I believe you're gonna have access to both handouts and the PowerPoint. And then I also found um, a dichotomous key that goes for what soil is in your backyard. This would be a great one to use if we do go virtual or when we do go virtual, so that that way they can kind of check and see. And then as you had your next class, you could have them come back in and share what type of soil they actually had in their yards or like Lori was saying yesterday, um, it's something that they could do with their families when they're going on vacations or when they visit grandparents. So something that, that's a lot of fun with that. Okay, we're gonna talk about soil crayons now. And soil, the different colors um, are based upon the minerals and the organisms that are inside of them. And so I just put some brief little maps up here so you could just kind of see different places where things go. Of course, we know in Oklahoma, we've got a lot of that red dirt here, but there are some other types of dirt too. I was very fortunate that I um, got the connection through my Ag in the Classroom ladies and uh, went to OSU to their soil testing uh, lab and was able to get a lot of samples and oh my gosh, they get hundreds of samples each week and they were very generous and willing to share for free. And you know, that's our favorite F word teachers. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Now remember you can, I know your middle school, I know your middle school, but some of you might still use flat Stanley or some kind of letter writing with traveling. They can even write to different um, states and um, you can collect, try to collect soil samples so that you can see them from possibly all the different states. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be with flat Stanley as you get older. Um, you can add that into your letter writing and contacting different um, state, what are they called? Um, travel places, so. The travel and transportation uh, bureaus, yeah. Great. Um, there's just so much, all the lessons that we're showing you, we try to pack in as much as we can, because once we get started, we just can't stop. Plus, there's so much that you can uh, differentiate for different grade levels and for different skill levels. Okay, these are the materials that we used in making the soil crayons. I would not suggest the test tubes. They were um, hard to get the, the uh, wax out of there once it started cooling. But we're gonna try again. Someone suggested that we uh, spray Pam down inside of it. We weren't sure we could get it lubricated all the way, but we may try like a vegetable oil on a long Q-tip or something. Uh, you know, we're gonna, you know how teachers are. It doesn't always work the first time, but that doesn't stop us. We just keep on trying. So we're gonna show you some of our things that we did and kind of explain it just a little bit. This is the lesson that we, got our information from to kind of get us started. That YouTube uh, site is listed and I just pulled pictures from the video, but this will make a lot more sense once you see the video and then also what you see that we did. I'm gonna show the video first. I think it'll make more sense. So hang on just one second. I'm gonna get to this video. Go here first. Um, I don't know. Okay. Share. Okay, hang on. Here. Okay. 
uh, maybe after four more times, I'll have this. Share. Yeah. So let's resume share. Share screen. Uh -huh. You have to go here first. Right here with the. Did it, did it get it? No. Oh, okay. Johnny, by the time school starts, you're going to be a pro and your students are going to be so impressed. Well, we hope. <laughs> For everyone else, you might want to practice if you think you might have to use Zoom. It, it, uh, it's tricky sometimes, so. All right, hold on just a second. Is it at the bottom? It must be, hang on. Here. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Let's see if it'll come up. There yes, goes. here we go. This has no uh, sound. Whoa. What happened? It really has no sound. All right, we're just gonna skip that part. How's that? Find it at the bottom. Oh, Lori says I should find it at the bottom, but I don't see it. Okay. Sorry, audience. So here's the steps. We did not have to dry or grind or put it through the sieve because we got it from the uh, soil sampling lab. There are other soil sampling labs and I'm sure that they would be happy to contribute that dirt uh, or soil, I'm sorry. And the, when the other part over here, they've just put a pantyhose over a cup and they're just sieving it through there. So then uh, the wax and the molds, we found that it was much easier to use a um, potato peeler, vegetable peeler, than it was to use a knife. But Lori said yeah. yesterday. We used the potato peelers, but you could also use um, tongue depressors or craft sticks. The, the wax is very soft. So you could use anything, something, anything like that would work um, to go along with it. And then of course, these are all materials that they could most likely have at home, even if they didn't have the ice tray. Um, they could use a regular candle, a cheap regular candle if they needed for wax. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. And we're gonna show you. All right, so now you can see here are the supplies we have. We have the different colors of soil. So you can see those and how they're different shades. There's lots of different ones that we got. However, hold this up. Okay. When we did them, we were a little disappointed in that they all really pretty much have the same shading to them. Now, when we colored with them, there is a slight variation, but not like we anticipated. But again, this is where you tell your students, we're not trying to put Crayola out of business. What we're doing is we're just using this, we're experimenting. You're doing a lot of problem solving, collaborating. Um, you're working together to figure out, you know, how much do we add of different things because they are made of different, they have, some have more clay products in them, that's gonna take more wax. Some have less, so you have to kind of play around with it. So you could definitely do a lot of science experimentation with this and make it more than just one lesson. So you can have your bags of soil. Here's your little mortar that you can crush it. You can throw, um, pour it down your funnel, do it however you need to with the pantyhose. And then we have our wax right here that you can get most anywhere or use a candle if you happen to be at home. Then we had our potato peeler and we just made small little pieces of wax. And then we put all of those in an old jar. And this just happened to be just an old salsa jar. So whatever they have that will not get too, too hot. So we put the shavings into the glass jar 
And then we put the glass jar in a pan of barely, barely boiling water. And so then we just let it um, melt. We stirred it every now and then with a long skewer. And that way we could just kind of keep it all the same consistency. Then we use that to pour. In the video, it refers to that as the hot bath. So that's just a, a, the water right before it gets to boiling point. When it said to prepare the molds, Adam in the classroom bought us these really nice little Teflon uh, molds that we could use for practicing. They didn't work. And you know, you that happens sometimes. So it, they, we just couldn't get them in there. It was that lip on there made it a little bit harder. So these little cheapy ones that you can find sometimes at the Dollar Tree, thrift store, garage sale, even ask your parents. Do you have an old plastic uh, tray for ice cubes, the long ice cubes? And this one worked better where it says to prepare your tray, you're putting in your parchment paper. If you just put it right in, it's gonna pop back out. So we put it in and then we just put a bag of soil over it to weight it down until we were ready. Um, this is the, this is the, this is a knot. This did not work with putting it in there. You can see the wax, it just dried as it started going down in there and uh, it just cooled too fast and they're great they have nice little tips on the end mm -hmm. it's just we could not figure out a way to get this the wax out check so. back with us next year we might have it solved or if you get it solved let us know if you have a suggestion feel free to type it in for us <laughs> okay well that was soil now i'm going to share my screen let me see i think i am Got two computers up so I can kind of see what you're seeing. There we go. All right, so all of that is on here and the video and the second video that's on here is actually an artist that does amazing. Um, that's what we were hoping to look like, but it didn't work. So, okay, soil paint is way much easier. Two thirds cup of soil is going to be enough for one color for 20 to 25 students. And it's mainly water and the soil, but you add a teaspoon of just like school glue or acrylic medium. That's just giving it a little bit thicker substance to use. But you can tell the color variation, I think a little bit easier with those. Okay, soil erosion. This is a big thing. Uh, soil erosion is uh, World Soil Day is uh, sponsored by United Nations and it is on December 5th every day. And they have, if you go to that site, they have posters, they have short videos, they have lesson plans and activities. Their main goal is to bring awareness that soil erosion is a problem. And I think one of the things that we know as teachers is that we can tell them all kinds of stuff, but if they don't see the relevancy in it, if it doesn't affect them, you know, kids, sometimes it just goes in one ear and out the other. Sometimes it does that anyway, but we tried our best to get them to, to understand. Well, they know the size of a soccer field. And if you talk about losing so many acres of land, a lot of times they, don't, they can't grasp that quite as easily. But every five seconds, we lose a soccer field of topsoil in the world. That equivalents, equi the equivalent of that is 2,000 soccer fields per year. That's a lot. So, honey, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you really quick. Okay. Uh, we had one person ask um, the mixture where you mix the wax and soil together before you put it in the ice trays. Is there a, cer a certain how much of each or is it just kind of trial and error? I believe the video, it's one to one. It's okay. just an even amount. However, we found that we needed to add a little bit more wax. And I think that depends upon the type of soil that you've got. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. So 2000 acres of soil a year that we're losing. So that's, that's a big bunch and it affects uh, crops, a 50% loss in crops. And that causes the roots not to um, grasp like they should. So your crops aren't as, as uh, uh, they're not getting the nutrients that they need. It degrades the soil structure. It decreases water reserves for plants. So there's more flooding and uh, it reduces the organic matter and the nutrition, 
nutrients that are in there. So there's a lot of reasons why we want to try to avoid soil erosion. Ag in the Classroom has a lot of lessons on soil erosion. I've listed several of the ones that we pulled resources from at the end, but there's so much more on there. So please go to there if you are interested. I also listed two little cute songs. One is an erosion love song, and it's, it's pretty cute. The kids will enjoy that. And then one that's about weathering and erosion. And if we have time, we'll listen to that a little bit later. Okay, again, tying it to them, making it relevant. The Death Bowl happened in Oklahoma. They study Oklahoma history in fifth grade or third grade. And I guess again in eighth grade. And so, I mean, but they live in Oklahoma. This is something that, you know, it, it is of relevance to them. So this is a quick little reading page that goes along with it. It came out of the Soil Science Magazine. And I got that from the Nutrients for Life. It's a great site. Again, it has free resources on there. This is a reading page where the kids can actually flip through and there's different activities. So you could send that to them through a Google Classroom or, or uh, through another type of resource if we go online. And uh, it has questions, it has interactive activities on there. There are some games. There are things that you could use in the classroom as well as at home. So it's a great resource. So getting into that, we're going to talk about soil erosion a little bit more. All right, so um, on your screen, you can see here's the directions, here's um, pictures but we're going to actually show you what we would do in class and actually um, have the pro um, products right here for them so that they can participate in it. You could separate them out and put them on in stations so that everyone's doing something different, or you could do it all together at, you know, in one class. So let's move. Okay. Look at me, I'm taking over here. Can you see, okay? I can't see this. All right, so you have your first bin. This is just a plastic bin and it has sand inside. So we're looking at waves this time and all of this is on the PowerPoint for you. So we put sand at the end. We're gonna fill it up with about two cups of water. So you just pour your water in. Then you're going to use an index card or anything that you have to create waves by moving it back and forth. You'll notice that the bottom will erode first when you have your waves and then the waves will eventually wash away the entire beach over time. So that is a great cause and effect for them to see. You can do sequencing, you could do um, how much time would it take um, depending on the strength of the waves. So there's lots of different ways you could do that. So that's your wave action. Next you have your wind. So this time you have a tub, you have sand at one end, about halfway up to form a sand dune, and then you have pebbles to represent boulders. So we have big ones and the smaller ones. We're gonna create wind by blowing through a straw and from the backside of the dune. And then we'll notice as we blow, So you'll notice as you blow that you can see the smaller pebbles have moved. So the smaller pieces of sediment will be moving and the boulders will stay in place. Okay, so that's some wind action. Obviously some sand will go different places. So you want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Next we have river action. So again, we have our tub. We have a, um, a sand covered hill. We have a riverbed going right down the middle with some pebbles along the way. We're gonna slowly pour some water down the hill to model, here, come back, to, map, to model the flow of the river. Notice the sand will erode down the riverbank as we do it. And you'll keep going and you will just notice as you go through that there's much more sand, even some of your smaller pebbles will be going and falling down. Okay, so that's your river action. Next we have our mountain erosion. 
on your mountain erosion, you have another tub. You have a mountain in the middle with tall rough edges. You put the water in a spray bottle and spray the top of your mountain. And it should represent millions of years of erosion from the rain and water. And you'll notice the mountain is shorter and the edges are smoother. Okay, so you'll just keep going. This is Bonnie, can you move the camera down just a little bit? We're having trouble seeing. There we go. Thank okay, you. So perfect. All right, so this one is harder to see far away, but then you will notice how the smaller edges or the edges will slowly come off and then you'll have smooth edges on the side instead of your rough. Which again, this is talking like the Arbuckles because the Arbuckles are so old and they've had rain millions or hundreds of years to beat them down and smooth them out. And then your final is again the mountain and then we added some toothpicks or craft sticks, whatever you would like to add to represent trees. And so again, you'll spray and you'll watch how small pieces go down. But the area with the trees, you'll notice the erosion is much, much slower. So then they can see that the trees help the, stand, the sand and the soil to stay. Okay, so lots of different things you can do with this. With sequencing, you can do your um, steps, procedures. You can do cause and effect before and after. Before and after. Um, they can even predict what would happen in five years, 10 years, 25 years. Okay, lots of different things you can do with that. With that. Okay, we know that was a fast um, example, but we want you wanting more instead of going, is that all? So anyway. All right, go back to share screen. Here we are. Okay, so all of this is on here. It's just very fast. And if you watch the video, it even tells you now you could stop the video to have the students do before, draw a picture of what's happened, what their station looks like before the action and then afterwards, even have them journal in their science according you know, to their grade, how you would do that. Okay, forensics is a big thing. The kids watch forensics on TV, they like that. So anytime something's kind of a little bit blood and gutsy, they kind of like that stuff. So it's, it's interesting to let them know that soil can be used to solve murders. But you don't wanna just tell them that, you want them to really know that this happens in the real world. So this was actually a double murder case and this is the newspaper that uh, one of the publications that came out about it. And then there is a lesson that goes along with that particular one. We're not gonna do it today, but I did put the uh, website on there. And then from uh, Nutrients for Life, this soil lesson is more for uh, a little bit middle school, but you could do it with, um, I would say your fifth graders, sixth graders could do it, fourth graders as well. But they're using clues of what kind of soil it is to identify it. As I, and uh, it talks about that one of the main ways that they solve problems uh, with forensics is by either tire tracks that are left behind or footprints that are left behind. So if there is a footprint, maybe clay embedded in a tennis shoe, then they're going to uh, be able to scrape that off and then they're able to match it maybe to the clay that's located by a lake where a victim was found. So it's something that's very interesting for them. You could do this for a lot of different levels. As I was kind of uh, looking at this and uh, preparing, I thought about, you know what? I bet you could use like Barbie shoes or uh, Hot Wheels, different types of little model cars and do some, leave some soil samples and then um, let them see what they could do with that and see if they could identify them. What were you gonna say, Lori, about here? Yeah, you could do these for, uh, you know, like I said, we could differentiate. You could differentiate up for those gifted students and you could differentiate for your students who need a little bit more scaffolding and, and your special ed students. And again, it's very hands-on. It could be hands-on if it's done at home as well. And all of our kids really enjoy that. And that's how you learn. Um, I did a, re a art class session last week through the National Art Gallery and they talked about all the research that shows that making uh, improves thinking and so Ag in the Classroom has you making all the time. Okay, 
We're going to talk about ed edible soil layers now, and Lori's going to show you this, so I'm going to move the video over for her. All right, so this is a great way just to get your students more involved. It can be a teaching tool where they can actually have a great visual to begin, or you can use it at the end, or you could do both. At the end, you could use it as an assessment where you have materials out for them and they have to put them in the correct order. So our final product could look something like this, and especially your older students, you could have them label all of the layers so that they can see um, which one goes in which order and you can test a real quick assessment for them and something that they can take with them. Um, we also have a poster here that you can see and this would be the layers of soil. So this is something that um, you could have together and work work together at the very beginning, and then it may be something that you have them create at the end as an assessment if you choose not to use the food items. Uh, while we're looking at posters, let's look at the other poster, which is right here. And this is just a poster that has the different kinds of soil. We have humus, sand, silt, and clay. And we included the content. So what's inside of the humus is decayed parts of once living organisms. The texture is moist and crumbly, where sand is gritty. Um, the humus, the grain size, it has the largest grain size, where if you go down to clay, it's the smallest grain size. So that, again, could be something you start with at the beginning. Maybe you learn about it, they practice with it, and then you have them create a poster or something to assess. So I think you need to put it down. All right, so now, Let's look at our edible soil layers. So first, quickly, you just have a cup, any cup, but one that you can see through is best. The bedrock is your whole Oreo cookie. That is your bedrock. Then you add your parent material on top of that. And we have butterscotch chips and chocolate chips that we just put in layers and mixed in for your bedrock. Again, your bedrock is your mostly solid rock. Oh, I'm sorry, that was your parent material, your um, two kinds of chips, I'm sorry. Then you have your subsoil. Your subsoil is your chocolate pudding. So you just have your chocolate pudding, you pour that in on top. And if you need to, you could probably share one cup for two students, depending on what objects you have. Next, you have your topsoil. Your topsoil is your crushed Oreos. So you like pour that on there. Your crushed Oreos is your topsoil, which is all the thin, rich layer where most of the nutrients are, okay? Then you have, just to look beautiful, your coconut at the top, which would be your organic material at the very top, okay? Mm -hmm. So then that would be your soil, your cup of soil. Our final, well, we have a couple final pieces. In, our final piece here is your gummy worm, which they all enjoy. That is their favorite, to have their gummy worm. And then today is a very special day for someone that's very important on our computer. So happy birthday, Melody. <gasps> that is super cute. Thank we you. We so added much. a candle just for her. <laughs> so happy birthday. <laughs> Y'all are so much fun. Uh, we did have a question come in, which I know when y'all presented earlier in the week, the poster was a hit. So we had somebody ask if they, you could um, look at the poster again that was on the door. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, I know that we had asked you to take a picture of those and we'll add those to your folder. And um, Audrey, I text those to you last night. Oh, yes, okay. they are added. So they'll be there whenever we share it out. Thank you so much. All right, there we go. Okay, hope you're not getting motion sick from us moving around here. Do I hit share screen first or just do it? There we go. All right. Okay, so we all have to assess. So a way that you could assess is by having them do the little edible cup and labeling it. You know, if they didn't have those particular products at home, they could certainly use others just so they knew the process and knew that like the bedrock was solid 
and could explain it as they went along, that would be great. Um, you could have them build it out of Legos or any kind of blocks that they have. Uh, if you've ever used, uh, we all like free stuff. So if you've ever done a scoop game, it's where you have questions on cards and they're numbered. And so they all take a spot in the room. They're social distancing before it was the thing to do. And so somebody might be at question number seven when they read that question and they get the answer, then they scoot to the next one. They don't have to ne necessarily be in numerical order. They're just whatever numbers on there. But there is a free template with uh, examples of the cards on there as well. So that would be something that you could use, of course, for soil or for any type of, of uh, topic that you had. There's also a free template for I have who has game templates. And soil properties is something that you can purchase off Teachers Pay Teachers. It's $5, but it's great because it's an escape room type activity. Had we all been together, we were going to play it together, but I didn't feel like I should put the cards online since it is something that that teacher is, is selling. So wanted to respect her creativity. But if you go online, it just kind of shows you the example of what it looks like. These are some of the cards and how they're, they're um, solved. And then there is a link to a digital escape room. So you could very easily um, have your students do this at home or at school. Even if like we're going to, the plan right now is that we're going to start school, but we'll be doing a lot of virtual activities in the classroom together just to, in preparation. So this would be a good activity for them to do. Okay, these are just a smithering of the Ag in the Classroom lessons. But Lori, you wanna tell them how they're listed on there? I, I don't know what you're No, uh, on the site, on the website. On the website, they're listed by um, lesson, by grade, uh, by topic and alphabetically. So there's lots of things on there. We use just little bits of pieces of these and there's so much more. And then these are all the different soil sources that we used. And um, again, I would check out that uh, Nutrients for Life and that World uh, Soil Day, a lot of good things there. And um, the videos, so. Do we have any questions or comments? We would love to see what you guys do in your classroom with soil and if you have any activities or if you try any of these this year. We'd love to hear your feedback. That helps us so that we can better prepare for next time. And it, since you'll feel like you'll be coming or going this year, we thought this was a good cartoon to end. Thank you, ladies. You guys did a great job. And I just want to let you know, I went through and was looking and at least five people must have really enjoyed your session today because they, I mean, um, yesterday because they came back again today to get more information from you. So I uh, second to see if I was better with the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did great. <laughs> Everyone really enjoyed it. There's lots of great comments coming in. You guys, these are two fabulous teachers. So if you've got questions, now's the time to ask them. You get a free opportunity to pick their brains for a few minutes. Some people are saying you guys are the best. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, it looks like there might be one question. Let's see. Can we hear the love song? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Let me find it here. Hopefully we did. Okay. Sure. We need to go to the PowerPoint and find the page. It is. Actually, the wrap I think is better, but they're both pretty darn good. We might have time for both. No. You have to bring Can they hear it? First. You're not there. Okay. At a place like this, you're never alone. Hang on. Stop. I'm gonna Stop. walk through this with you. Yep. Let's get her to slide. She's a poster for the other side. Is it down there? Might be. Okay, now we think we got it. So 
Did you change? Can you hear it? Yes, we can hear it. Okay. Where the ring turns solid rock into silk and sand and clay. But erosion, erosion, it carries them away. Humus forms when living things die and then decay. But erosion, erosion, it carries it away. Erosion takes away the soil. We need to have things grow. Okay, you get the drift, right? <laughs> okay, we're gonna that was so fun. Play us some of the rap too. Now let's see if it's on. We're gonna try it. Writing's not that, but oh, it's got a sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word. You know about weathering, break down that rock with weathering. Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. Not to be confused with erosion, where rock is smooth, not broken. Move it round. Move Feel free around. to sing wherever you are. Move it round. Both can cause physical changes to the surface of the earth. No, they're not strangers. Break it down, move it round. Break it down, move it round. Oh, smack! Can you help me understand how erosion and weathering are different? Smack rocks to the rescue, man. Let's break it down with weathering. Weathering occurs when water, when the ice break down a rock into a smaller slice. Plants and temperature changes cause more weathering situations. Water can dissolve minerals. Wind can blow sand against a rock wall. Water collects in cracks, you know, and what if it gets cold? Burn. The water freezes in to ice expands and splits apart a rock that's right tree roots are strong or robust they wedge in a rock and break it up you know about weathering break down that rock with weathering break it down break it down break it down break it down not to be confused with erosion where rock is smooth, not broken move it round move it round move it round move it round both can cause physical changes to the surface of the earth no they're not strangers break it down Move it round, bring it down, move it round. Moving on with erosion, nice. Movement of rock by water when the eyes. Gravity it plays a huge role too. Here are some erosion examples for you. Ocean waves wash and sand off the beach. Rivers carry soil through valleys. Wind blowing sand off the sand dune land. Land slides and glaciers bringing rocks to new places. Deposition, that's a word you need to know. When rocky roads, there's a place it's gotta go. When the rock is dropped or deposited, we call that deposition of sediment. Ha! You know about weathering. Break down that rock with weather. Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. Not to be confused with erosion, where rock is smooth, not broken. Move it round, move it round, move it round, move it round. Both can cause physical changes to the surface of the earth. Oh, they are not strangers. Break it down, move it round, break it down, move it round. Ow! I lost my screen. Johnny, I was hoping you'd start dancing for us because I was remembering a video that was played during the uh, distance learning that you guys made for your students there at Truman Elementary and you've got some moves. So I personally was hoping that you would share them with us. We may have lost her. It looks like she's signed off on that note. <laughs> Oh, um, Johnny. Gonna dance too. <laughs> I know. I know they're still there because they had two computers pulled up. So Johnny and Lori, you ladies did a fantastic job. We appreciate all that you did. 
um, both sessions, doing, doing two sessions for us takes a lot of work and we appreciate that so much. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm gonna let Melody and Emily sign off and then I will after them. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us all week and it's not too late to sign up for next week if you're interested in some of the sessions and we appreciate all you do for students and agriculture and thanks for being a fan of Ag in the Classroom. We appreciate you guys very much. Yes, thank you so much. I'll just kind of echo, echo what Mel Melody said. Can't talk this afternoon, but we really hope that you will and uh, join us next week. And yes, happy birthday to Melody. <laughs> we had to add that to Facebook this morning. Uh, but yes, we have some great presenters next week. We've had awesome presenters this week. So we're looking forward to another week, uh, two days of sessions next week. Thank you. Yes. And let your co-teachers know they can sign up through Monday at noon. And then for everyone that has signed up, we will um, send out your links to you uh, Monday afternoon, evening. So be looking for those just like this week. And Johnny and Lori are coming back on for one final goodbye. So we'll wait on them to turn their cameras on so and say goodbye to everyone. Uh, and Melody made us promise no singing, but she was right. She commented, Jamie Allen would be so pleased that music was played in our session. So Johnny and Lori, good job for that. And uh, happy birthday, Melody. And I think, Johnny and Lori, are you going to come back on real quick? Maybe. All right. I do appreciate all the birthday wishes. Um, but you did notice I didn't share the Facebook post this morning because it said, and wish Melody a happy birthday. I thought that that would be pretty terrible if I said, oh, please wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny and Laura. You ladies did great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great year. Everybody have a good evening. We'll see you next week. Places on the planet, these we'll join you next week. Me and you. <laughs>